antimatter, human veins, and low frequency suppression or oppression. What I'm explaining here, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in because this is extremely important, whether you're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. We're going to jump right into it because we have so much to cover here. Now, what does clout stand for? Okay, there's a few different meanings, and this is a perfect example of distortion. This is exactly how predictive programming is utilized to harness the availability of certain elements and certain technologies that are out in the open but we cannot realize. So depending on who you ask, and I'm putting up the links and the sources and the pictures right now for you guys, clout stands for coupling logistics to operations to meet uncertainty and the threat by the United States Air Force. This is a declassified document, and that's what clout stands for according to the United States Air Force. Now, if we take a look as well, what we're going to find in China, and this is going to tie back a little bit later, is a, a, Jap- sorry, a, a Japanese and European project called clout as well that has to do with overall infrastructure And essentially, service providers having satellites up in space and in Earth's orbit in order to improve the infrastructure of Japan and Europe. Now, we can also tie this back to China with Project LACE, but I'll get to that in a second. But CLOUT also stands for, now bear with me, Constructive Low-Grade Oppression Utilizing Telematics. Now, telematics means long distance information that is generally harnessed and created by some type of computational technological device. Now, you might say, okay, what does all this have to do with antimatter, human veins, and the whole lot? Now, we're going to jump right into it. So, what we first need to understand is that according to Wikipedia, antimatter in modern physics is defined as matter that is composed of the antiparticles or partners of the corresponding particles of quote-unquote ordinary matter. Minuscule numbers of antiparticles are generated daily at particle accelerators. Total production has been only a few nanograms. Now, end quote, this is not to be confused with dark matter. There is a difference. I want to make that very clear. So, antimatter, and I'm putting up the articles on the screen right now, is also used in medicine, it's been used in, you know, science fiction, Star Trek, which I don't think is science fiction. But anyways, that's for another time having to do with creating faster than the speed of light travel and things like this. Now, antimatter is composed of positron emission tomography. All right. And I'm not an expert on it, which is why I'm just reading off my notes here. But these are essentially particles that are used in medicine, essentially. So PETs, positron emission tomography, is used for people who have serious health issues. So we can see here antimatter is used for a few different things. Now, here's the thing as well. Antimatter also produces various types of frequential waves. Now, you're going to say, okay, what does all this have to do with human veins and all that? So the human body. One of the few things that people really don't know about the human body is that it is an electrical system, pretty much. So an electrical system controls the beating of your heart, essentially, which then sends command to, commands to the rest of your body to pump the blood from your heart into your veins. Now, if we take a look, for example, and I'm mentioning this right now just to get it over with, because some of you might be annoyed that I've mentioned him so much, but Phil Schneider had mentioned this is a form that certain great aliens have used in addition to adrenochrome to excrete and extract certain glands of the human body to use for studying and this and that and so on and so forth. Now, here's what we're going to notice. There are a handful, actually not even a handful, a thousands of satellites that get shot into space and into orbit, whether it's public or not that we don't know about. Now, when we take a look, for example, at newsintact.com, we're going to see the headline here is techno signatures detecting alien antimatter propulsion. But the question then becomes before we jump into what this technology is, we have to then ask ourselves the most basic question. Is this alien or is it not? Because it might actually not be, right? But it might be proposed as a form of some type of unknown energy source that really the NSA or SIGINT or NASA is using in order to act as a cover. Or maybe even the United States Air Force, the Pentagon, you name it, they've got it, right? So what we're then going to look at here is we're going to see that there is a satellite or some type of anomalous space object, and not just one, by the way, that is omitting low frequency waves that is ironically directed directed and pointed directly at Earth, pardon me. Now, what we're also going to notice is that the mathematical probability of something like this being pointed at Earth is very slim. Now, you could say, okay, Dave, we got to take a step back. And even though you're not a mathematician and you're not good with math and all that, 
the amount of energy and the size of the universe relative to Earth is so big that eventually something's going to come and hit Earth or cross Earth and some type of frequency will be detected. And I agree with you guys, you're 100% right. But at the same time, we look at the precision of what is being directly aimed at Earth and we see that this is not a comet. This is not some type of anomalous ship. This is something that NASA refuses to comment on. This is more than likely a human satellite of some type of, of advanced technology. Could it have technology that is harnessed, element 115 or other elements that have been reverse engineered from UFOs? Could this have technology that extraterrestrials have literally given the United States and Israel and China and Japan and all these major countries as well, and England, the UK and all that? Very possible as well, and India. Now, the next thing I want to point to is I want to point to the World Health Organization website. Why do I do this? Because if we take a look at the World Health Organization website, we're going to see here that female genital mutilation is a big, big problem, as is uh, sex trafficking and human mutilation and organ harvesting and black market uh I guess we could say, I hate to say the word businesses, but where they harvest certain organs or they put these women to sleep and they remove their certain parts of their genitals, which is terrible. Now, we know, guys, the CIA is not particularly, how do we say this, keen on abiding by any type of morality or ethics when it suits them. We know based on things in the past like the Reagan, the Iran Contra situation with Reagan, the CIA was importing cocaine. In order to fund certain operations, this is nothing new. So why would the CIA not have certain things done to unfortunately certain human beings in order to be able to extract the human veins that is then used through antimatter that is connected through the positron emission tomography to then be harnessed for this type of satellite. Now, you might say, okay, Dave, you're talking crazy like you always do, but just bear with me and this will come full circle for you guys. Now, here's what we're going to notice. We're going to see that, yes, hundreds of millions of women every year have genital mutilation done to them, which is a, a crime to humanity. Doesn't matter what it's used for. Are the majority of them going on the black market or used for whatever type of depraved, sick purpose? Absolutely. But we also have to consider the fact that if we just use probability, basic mathematical probability, there's a very good chance some of these genitals that contain some of the most prominent veins in the human body, at least on the female side, are being redirected to some type of government agency, whether it's used as a front or there's a dummy company or there's multiple safeguards in place put in by these intelligence agencies like the Mossad and MI6 and the CIA so nothing traces back to them. I mean, look, they're the masters of masters when it comes to this kind of stuff. They're spies, let's face it, right? So we can't rule out the fact that this is being done, but... Here's the next thing that I want to talk about. If we go to statista.com, which is a statistics website, highly respected website, what we're going to see here is number of NCIC missing persons files in the United States in 2019 by age and gender. Now, those under the age of 21, as you see on the screen right now, are substantially higher. We're looking at about half a million disappeared. That does not include the missing 411 cases. Now, yes, there's different reasons. There's sex trafficking, organ harvesting from humans. Uh, there's so many different depraved reasons, but some of them are abductions by certain aliens and others are abductions by humans. Now, pretty much what I'm saying here, and I'm going to make it very simple, and it might sound crazy as I simplify it, but look, as we've seen very recently with this whole pedophile ex expose of all these people that are being revealed as sex traffickers and things like this that were being laughed at three, four years ago when they were being accused, we're starting to see people are waking up and there's a massive revelation occurring. So certain bodies are being kidnapped and this is nothing new. The United States has done this many times as, as has many other countries to be fair. They're kidnapping specifically women who tend to have more, I guess we could say, powers, so to speak. I, I don't want to use the word powers, but they have more prominent gen, uh, genital exposés, if we will. I say that very carefully. In a much more reproductive sense, so scientifically, there's a reason why women are tested on much more than men. However, they're taking these women, some of them, and they're mutilating them the same way that we have found mutilated cows and things like this. They're taking these women, utilizing their genitals and the, particularly the veins within their genitals to then provide fuel for this satellite. Now, why do we need the, the genitals and the blood and the veins of the, these women, 
particularly young women, to fuel this satellite. Well, if we were to put something of higher frequency, that is that of a natural biological entity inside of this satellite, what we're going to find here is we're going to find that there are a ton a ton of different ways that could be done but here's the problem they all produce high frequency waves as been proven scientifically through the usage of antimatter now why are we not using or why is the cia or whoever's doing this not using high frequency waves but rather are using low frequency waves here's why the lower the frequency the lower the frequency the more you can suppress and oppress and control the minds of human beings on this planet. Now, there's a little bit of an irony to all of this because this is nothing new. When you walk into a room of people, I was explaining this to someone just recently, when you walk into a room of people and you just feel all the negativity, it's been scientifically proven that low frequencies align with that of negative emotions and negative intuition and negative thought. So low frequencies by nature, and we can argue this in a paranormal sense as well, low frequencies by nature literally deprave people mentally and energetically and sucks the energy out of them now whether you want to subscribe to that in a spiritual sense or a scientific sense take that as you wish however we can also argue that both are one in the same but when you walk into a room that's filled with happiness and energy you realize that everyone's vibrations and consciousness are raised so it's very clear that this is it doesn't take much to figure out especially with these extremely advanced scientists on a, working on a classified level that low frequencies must be emitted in order for this anti-matter satellite to keep the minds of the people oppressed now this is not the work of just the united states this is the work of multiple countries that have also ironically signed the antarctic deal now is there something that bounces a certain signal that absorbs this in antarctica that uses that to broadcast to the rest of the planet very possible i would not rule it out but we all, what we also have to look at here is that in some cases rare cases it does turn and allow certain people to have i guess we could call powers particularly women now this is why i had a bit of a struggle with my sentencing a few minutes ago when i used the word powers i didn't want to really use that but in this case you're going to see that that absolutely does fit the situation now let's take a look at wikipedia natasha demkina so According to Wikipedia, Natalia Natasha Nikolaevna, or Nikolaevna, sorry, Demkina, born in 1987, is a Russian woman who claims to possess a special vision that allows her to look inside human bodies and see organs and tissues and thereby make medical diagnoses. Now, since the age of 10, she has performed readings in Russia. She is widely known by the childhood variant of her given name, Natasha, end quote. She allegedly has x-ray vision. This is what happens when you send so much low frequency antimatter waves from this particular satellite that then gets broadcasted onto Earth, probably bounces off of multiple satellites because we can't just say it's something out of a, a, a just some our imagination where it's just this one satellite and it's sending everything to Earth. There's got to be an apparatus of systems that are being used here. But what we're seeing is that people, for example, and this is the same, very similar to that of people with golden blood. You have the rare oddity of the rare one out. The, the, the odd one out rather, sorry. Now, when we take a look at what she can do, she has x-ray vision. Now, what's ironic enough is that she has claimed that she stops being able to harness this x-ray vision as she claims she has when she feels happier. Why is that the case? Because low suppression energy frequency waves are being sent from this satellite that essentially give her this type of power. Now, I don't want to use the word power. I don't want to make it seem like it's something out of a movie. But at the same time, we also have to look and say, okay, what other word can be used here? If this woman has x-ray vision, that's a phenomenal feat right? So now obviously there may be something off or maybe something right inside of her genetic makeup that we don't have. There may be some type of resilience to these frequencies or her body is just responding in its own way to these low level frequencies that are then being sent from this particular satellite. Now you might then say, okay, Dave, what the hell are you talking about when you say a satellite? So here's what we have to understand. There are multiple satellites being sent out in space. Allegedly, it could be a Black Knight satellite, could be the one that everyone's talking about. There's so many different kinds. However, what we have to understand is that these commercial and private corporations send satellites up for intelligence agencies all the time for mind control and suppression. And this might sound crazy, but look, guys, this is not the first time that mind control and suppression has been spoken about by whistleblowers who ended up killing themselves. And I say that with air quotes, but I really mean that they ended up being murdered by whichever party was interested in having them dead probably the cia because they exposed too much mind control experiments have been conducted on at least 10 million american citizens that doesn't include citizens of other countries of other government experiments that we don't even know about now 
If we take a look, as of 2018, according to Wikipedia, and I quote, it was estimated that Chinese authorities may have detained hundreds of thousands, perhaps a million Uyghurs and other ethnic Turkish, uh, Turkish Muslims, Christians, as well as some foreign citizens, such as Kazakhstanis, who are being held in these secretive internment camps, end quote. Now, what does this have to do with the Chinese concentration camps? I spoke about this in Project Lace, about how there may be some hybrid excuse me, experimentation occurring, and there's evidence to suggest that. Now, doesn't mean there's proof. There's a difference between evidence and proof. I want, I want to make that very clear. However, it, this would be ripe for world governments to come together and say, listen, it is in our best interest to oppress and suppress the people within our own respective countries. So again, the whole thing, the enemy of, the, of my enemy is my friend. And the overall enemy of these world governments is us, yourself, myself, the people. Right. So world governments have no problem shaking hands and signing deals when it benefits them. So let's take a look. The Antarctic Treaty, ironically, the one treaty in the world where a bunch of countries can get together, not demand any specific requests or provisions and say, you know what? Yeah. OK, we're not going to go. And if we go, we got to let everybody know. As I've said many times, the Antarctic Treaty, the Chinese concentration camps, which allegedly the CIA has connections to, which is one of the reasons, one of many reasons why China will never fully disclose what they're doing there. Again, it's also because it's China, but it works in the CIA's interest. So you start to see how things start to fall into place. You add that to the fact that satellites are being launched by government secretly, by corporations, by commercial privatized companies, by publicly traded companies on the stock market, whether they announce it or not, by NASA. So this is nothing new by the DIA, by the CIA, by DARPA, who know the Pentagon, who knows how many satellites are up there and how many mind control frequencies are being emitted. This may be one of many different satellites, but the key here is that certain blood uh, vein genitalia from certain women, particularly young women, is being harnessed here. Now, I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm not trying to create something where there really isn't, but we have to look at all the angles here. The evidence suggests, based on the missing 411 cases, and specifically about how, as according to the World Health Organization themselves, abducted young woman is a serious problem. Now, yes, again, like I said, tr sex trafficking, all that it's being used for, but when we take a step back and we look at the fact that human veins help power low-frequency antimatter technologies, and that CERN has also talked about this and confirmed this. Look, guys, you may think I'm a crazy nut job or you may think I actually have something serious to say here, but we cannot rule out all of the different possibilities. And so the evidence is right there. And again, like I said at the beginning of the episode, this is a perfect form of disinformation and distortion as a usage and as a tool of an assistive form of predictive programming because you're distorting what the operation stands for in and of itself because clout stands for three different things based on my research. Right. And the sources are all in the link below for those of you on YouTube. So it's not like I'm hiding my sources. You can see what I'm looking at and you'll see that it's just a dramatic change in what these projects are and they can't seem to get their story straight. So please let me know what you guys think. This is something that I think is extremely complex, but at the same time, it sounds so unrealistic that if people heard it, they would laugh at it. But again, I can give example after example. People laughed at the Epstein thing three years ago. Then about a year and a half ago, when it became acknowledged by the mainstream media, everyone believed it. So again, what's going on here? We got to look at all the different angles. So please let me know what you guys think. I genuinely, I appreciate you guys so, so much from all over the world tuning in to watch, and we will catch you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much.